All right, welcome back. I'm excited to be doing this one today. Today we're going to talk about, I'm now about one year into owning an Oz Roosevelt. My first one looked a lot like this one, although it didn't have the dark wash blade. It had a stone wash blade, but same handle. And I've really just uh, fallen in love with this model. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit about that and also what it's been like using them for about a year. I do carry these pretty often. It's one of my main go-to in terms of my nicer knives that I carry. Uh, but I'll just really quickly walk you through what I have on the table here, and then we'll talk about what I carry most, which are these two. So this one right here is Oz Roosevelt number 10. Uh, you can see that here on the serial number. You'll notice this one doesn't have the swedge on the blade. This is a very early one. It was a hand rub satin blade. Really neat one with some highlighted anno. This has been back for a spa and Daniel Osborne and team just did a fantastic job of making that look like it's brand new again. So appreciate what they've done there. And that really speaks to the company. One of the things I've really enjoyed about the company is it's a bunch of really great people that really appreciate their customers and treat them that way. And I appreciate that as a customer. <clears throat> the next one here is number 330. It shows off a little bit of the anno that they do. Ironically, this is the only one that I have with uh, Timascus, even though I love a lot of their Zerka, you know, their Zerk pocket clips and stuff. I only have the one in the collection at this point. I've gotten rid of a lot of my others for whatever, one reason or another. This one has one of their early stone washed uh, blades in Zfinite blade steel. I should say that first one was AEBL, which they don't use anymore, nor do they use the Zfinite. They've gone to Magna Cut. Um, but this one... It's pretty darn similar to how they're made today, despite being number 330 that was made in like really their first year in business. And it illustrates a bit of what they do with some of their variety with Anno and so on. Uh, the next one here, number 522, is uh, my only one with acid washed or acid etched blade. I can't remember which one this has. And then it also has an oil slick zirconium backspacer and pocket clip, both super cool. Um, nice darkened hardware and stuff, and this one just represents a little of what I think they do in terms of what's cool in their series. This one is Zfinite. It's one of the last ones before they went to Magna Cut, I think in the 700 range or mid-600 range. I'm forgetting off the top of my head, but if I were to carry one of my older ones, this one would be very high on the list. It's just a very cool user configuration. We'll go to A19. Pretty simple here. Um, more got this one for the serial number as some personal sentimental value to me. Um, so that's a pretty cool one there. Just very simple, but also a nice little polished titanium handle and darkened hardware. Kind of cool. You know, a little bold there. Be easy to just keep the hardware the same color. Um, that brings us to number 1058, I believe it is, which is one of my main carry knives. At this point, they were all getting very similar in terms of the action and the consistency, the hardware and the bearings were made in house. And you could really see at this point, they were starting to hit their stride and just do fantastic work. This one's a really good representation of that in one of their most popular configurations known as the Silver Surfer. This one makes a phenomenal EDC. If you carry this, aside from if you scratch the blade or something, the only place you're gonna really notice anything is on this pocket clip because it doesn't match the handle, which would be really cool if they did that at some point. Not sure if they're ever gonna do that though. Uh, brings us to number 1954. Um, very cool configuration. This is a newer design. They hadn't done this configuration until this year, 2023, called the radial frag pattern. Um, so in order, these were radial, just PJ, radial, golf putter. Um, you know, another PJ style there, golf putter, golf putter, and radial frag. Obviously a big fan of that golf putter uh, design there, but just another really simple one. Again, um, one that has a sentimental value to me on the uh, on the serial number, so part of why I have it, but also because I think this is just a super cool configuration. One of the things I notice when I handle this one, man, you just hear this really nice like shunk in the sound of the action, and it's just phenomenal action. This one's really new and never really been used, so nice one. Um, you know, I skipped one there. I missed uh, 1457, so I kind of showed it at the beginning, but um, dark wash, dark wash, like fully dark wash, hardware, handle, and blade, just a phenomenal, this is my main EDC Rosie, phenomenal configuration for EDC. 
very hard to beat one like that in terms of you can put this through its paces and you're probably not going to notice much um, in terms of the wear. So then we go with that one. And then this one is my newest one. They've done quite a few since then because the volume's really gone up. Um, but this was a Maker Syndicate buy, number 2,204. They're now in the 2,400s or 2,500 range now. This one has a ladder Damascus, the radial frag pattern, the darkened um, hardware, matching pocket clip, matching backspacer. Um, but just about one of the coolest knives in my collection, if not the coolest or my favorite. I'm not sure, 100%, but it might be my favorite knife in my collection. And... Uh, just a beautiful example of what they're capable of over there um, with this, uh, I think it's Mike Norris. It's flipping, slipping my mind if it's Mike Norris ladder or if it's another um, Damascus maker. Nichols, Nichols ladder Damascus, not Mike Norris, Nichols. Really nice. So let me put a, a few of these aside now um, because I really want to focus on the EDC of the knife and do a bit more of a review of it. I've done, you know, some over the over the years. Um, but it's been a while since I really just talked about, like, is this a good knife? What do I like about it? What do I not like about it? Um, so let's start with sort of my order of operations. Uh, I look at aesthetics first and foremost. That's, if I don't like the way the knife looks, I honestly don't own it. There's not a knife in my collection. I'm like, that is <clears throat> ugly. Um, but there are differences. There are knives that are good aesthetics and there are knives that are amazing aesthetics. I think this knife has good aesthetics. I don't think it's necessarily the best knife ever when it's open, but it's pretty good when it's closed. I think it looks pretty cool when it's closed. It's one of the ways that it photographs best, that it just sort of shows best, is when it's closed, you can see one of the biggest benefits of the knife, which is that they've done amazingly efficient use of space. When it's open, it's maybe not quite as good looking, but it hits my number two thing. How are the ergos? And man, are the ergos good on this knife. Maybe one of my favorite knives in this sort of three ounce, three inch category. I, I struggle to think of one where I like the ergos more than this. It is just fantastic in hand. As I like to say, feels like it was made with human hands in mind. Really, really nice. And they continue to do little things. You can see this older one doesn't have it, but on these newer ones, which is part of why I like this one, um, they have this um, uh, rounded off pocket clip. So they continue to do things to try and make that feel better in hand and enhance the user experience. But man, the ergos on this thing are so good. Deployment, damn, it's good. Reverse flick, widely considered a lot of people's favorite way of opening a knife for whatever reason. My other favorite way though, personally, is rollout. I actually prefer a rollout to a thumb flick in a lot of ways. Thumb flicks are great, but um, for me, number one, number two, trade them off. Reverse flick and rollout, those two are like my top two favorite ways of opening a knife. Um, thumb, thumb flick's great. This one's thumb flick is not as strong as its reverse flick, but it may be the best reverse flick of any knife I've ever felt. And the lock bar pressure does not affect it. I can put you know two fingers on the lock bar or whatever I'm capable of doing and it will not mess things up at all. It is like almost impervious. You can see there, if I went way out of my way to put my finger in the wrong place, then it somewhat affects it. But, you know, if I'm rolling it out and I have my finger right here versus up here, almost no impact on the, uh, on the ability to deploy the knife. And a big part of that, I believe, is the, uh, you can actually see the detent balls there they are positioned way forward on here and they're really close to the pivot. So this has actually quite a bit of leverage in breaking the two detent balls loose um, from their closed position. And I do believe that makes some difference on this knife in terms of how it's so easy to deploy. So very interesting there. Um, what else? And let's switch here just to keep it interesting. Closing action, very good. Lock bar is easy to get to, even though there's not like a lot of relief here. It's kind of wide and very easy to access. Because of that, I never have a complaint about accessing the lock bar here. Drops to the fingernail, great. It's not drop shut with gravity. The new XL one where the blades a little heavier are, but these blades are a little lighter and um, you have to give it either like a whip shut or you have to shake it down a little bit. Not a big deal, but 
worth noting. So the closing action is probably not the number one strength of the knife. I'd say the opening action is one of the most satisfying knives that I've ever opened and a big part of why it's great. But if you go like this and kind of close it up, it does feel darn good. So closing action is very good. I'm just saying it's 90% of the best. The best tests have that full drop shot action. This doesn't have that. But man, it's, it's very satisfying despite that. Um, and overall, the action and just ability to deploy the knife, very simple, very easy, intuitive. Intuitive to hold it, intuitive to deploy it, easy to reverse flick it. Um, just a, a very straightforward knife to operate, um, despite being a very high-end knife, which sometimes those don't go hand-in-hand. High-end knives sometimes are a little weird in how they operate. This one is just designed to work extremely well, which is why it's so popular and why they've grown from one person to five people over a, a two-year period. You know, or maybe it's even more now, um, but their operation has really increased in uh, the number of people working to produce these great knives. Um, some of the other things I look at are, you know, blade shape, blade steel. They use Magna Cut on these new ones. So great blade steel, and they harden them to like 63, 64 Rockwell hardness, if I recall correctly. Let me just double check that I'm uh, not off on that. I know it was 62, 63 for a while. Yeah, 63, 64 on the uh, Magna Cut now. So that's super cool. You know, nice hard Magna Cut, good edge retention and stuff. Very slicey blade profile. You can see it's, you know, really like a, a full grind from the bottom of the top on a flat grind. So very functional and plenty of room to sharpen there on the choil. So a knife that, again, is designed really for decades of use. Man, it's just so intuitive. The way it feels in the hand, it just feels like there's something like magically geometric about this knife that just make it better than most knives in some way. Pocket clip is very adequate. It's nothing like crazy good, but it's good enough. Um, and it is, you know, worked, uh, milled out of titanium. So I'd say it's above, well above average. I'm just saying I've seen like a few that might be better here and there, but it's very, very good. Sometimes a little hard to get it over the pant, depending on the thickness of your pants. It's not a huge lip here, but generally a very good pocket clip. I very rarely have a concern with this pocket clip when I'm using it. So very good there. Um, there are a lot of like updates and upgrades you can do. They'll sell hardware here and there. Um, there are a lot of people doing aftermarket scales for them, which makes it pretty fun to own and to be able to swap out. If you have one and you can only afford one, you can always do like swaps of like hardware to keep it interesting, pocket clips to keep it interesting. So there's become quite a good aftermarket economy for these and there are quite a few folks that do make good aftermarket parts that are uh, reliable and work well with the knife and uh, won't, won't be a big issue if you use them. So uh, definitely considerable for the mod heads out there. Not a lot of stuff out of China or whatever, but you know definitely some, some domestic companies that do some really good work. Um, that's considerable. And then there's just this really nice range of like styles. I have more consistent ones here, but man, there are a ton of crazy anno colors in different patterns. There's the mag pattern, the speed holes they've done over the years. There are just a ton of different things that they've done well in that terms. So like overall, um, the things that I think are really important, um, they check a lot of the boxes for me. Um, you know, I'm a big proponent of making the ergos really good and not having a flipper tab. Like on a perfect knife for me, you don't have a flipper tab. And instead of that sticking out here in some weird way, you have perfect ergos. So, um, man, this knife just comes together really well. It continues to be pretty much my favorite all around EDC model. I have other models that I love, like the uh, Brown Mini FSD and others, but I don't carry them quite as often. Uh, I definitely carry them a lot, uh, don't get me wrong. Uh, the Demco's also one of my favorites for sure. Um, a very functional design and great locking mechanism and stuff. But if I want like a nice frame lock knife for a carry and not something that, you know, breaks the bank at multiple thousands of dollars, you know, these now, you can get them $800 off of a drop. They're doing 50 knives a drop, so people are winning them. They're doing first come, first serve now, which I love, not just lottery. 
So you don't just have, you know, a bunch of people that get lucky because their names get drawn a bunch of times. Now first come, first serve has become a thing. Um, so I continue to think this is going to become one of the staple American-made knives in a lot of people's collections. Um, I get a lot of messages from you all, people that say, hey, Dan, I finally got a Rosie, and you were spot on. This is a really fantastic knife. And it's not me. I mean, I learned about this from other people, too. It's really the knife. You know, this is just a really, like, objectively good knife. Again, aesthetics may not be for everyone. The blade shape in particular, I'd say, is the most polarizing part. There's also an opinion by many people that they don't want, you know, the um, handle to uh, flow in the opposite direction. So they want one kind of consistent flow around here. Brown Knives does a pretty amazing job of making that work, but it still doesn't feel quite as ergonomic as this, in part because here you have like a gap to get to the blade. Here the blade just aligns perfectly. So when you put your finger on it, you don't feel two scales. You feel like one flat surface. And that's a really key finger right there. The front finger, the, the, your, your pointer finger, is where you get a lot of your control and stuff. These three kind of work together against these two. Um, you know, and yes, these work together, but I'd say these are the really important, you know, control points. So your thumb and your pointer finger, you know, if you go think about how you write something, you know, that's what you're using in order to write with. So um, that that's really interesting to me, just that they've optimized for that pointer finger ergonomics. Um, from a, from a reliability perspective, super easy to service this knife. You just pop open one, two, three screws, pull over, pull off this scale, take care of things, put it back together. You don't have to remove the pocket clip if you don't want to. Just very easy to work on. I would like a pack captive pivot design. That'd be like one you know, thing I'd love to see them do over time would be a captive pivot design. That'd be really cool. Maybe even a more interesting pivot design would be nice. Um, so that's not my favorite thing about the knife there. But this one actually works really well. I have very little issue with like getting the knife to lock up and have good action. It's one of those knives that tunes into a good spot really easily, like way less sensitive um, to this being super tight than most knives. It actually doesn't have to be super tight. It needs to be tight to a certain point and then you get good lockup and then you have good action. And that's like a really nice element is that there's actually a little bit of room you don't have to be perfect. You have to be good, but not perfect uh, to get the action to be where it should, um, which is nice. You know, honestly, that's kind of a breath of fresh air as someone that works on their knives themselves instead of just always sending them to the maker. Sometimes I send them in. Sometimes I work on them myself. <clears throat> um, you know, aside from that, I'd say just the traction of the handles. If you get one of these milled versions is really nice and feels good in hand. And that's about it. You know, my one year review, this continues to be like pretty much my favorite all around knife model. And hopefully that says a lot because I have uh, definitely gotten my hands on a lot of knives and I'm not like a crazy knife person, right? Like I'm definitely a crazy knife person, but I'm not like a crazy knife person. So I don't like have crazy knives that are totally illogical. I don't like carry even my 80-20 full-size Demco. I very rarely carry this. I'm very picky. Hence the name of the channel, Pocket Priorities, on what I carry and what I allow um, in my pocket. So, you know, if this occupies my pocket a good percentage of the time, which it does, I do feel like it says a lot because I'm a pretty critical uh, user of knives. I'm not always the most critical in terms of owner, certainly not versus, you know, my wife as an example. She's extremely critical on what she would actually own, which is almost nothing. But I'm a very critical like user. Like, what would I actually put in my pocket? It has to be very light. Um, I have to really enjoy using it. I have to really trust the lock bar and so on. So this one's high on the list. That's all for now. Please like, subscribe. Love to hear your comments on this one. Um, and if you want to see deeper reviews of other knives that I have or don't have, you can either send them in or ask me to do a review of something that maybe I've you know done an unboxing of but have not done a review. I'm kind of getting into more of a review mode right now. I have less knives coming in than before, uh, which has freed me up to do more of these like 20 minute review type videos, as opposed to just a bunch of seven minute unboxings. Sometimes I was getting up to three, four unboxings a night, and that was pretty overwhelming. Um, backed that off quite a bit, and now we're really getting into the knives that I think are fantastic and really worth everyone potentially owning. 
Now, of course, price point would be one of the big drawbacks of this knife for anyone that doesn't believe in paying $700 to $1,700 in the case of this Damascus version for a knife. Um, this is not the knife for you, of course, um, but for those of us that are going to spend $1,000 on a knife, pretty hard for me to think of one that I would have in my collection if I could only have one. It's like this, the Brown Mini FST, the VC Edge interface. There, there's only five, you know, or so um, knives that I feel like are really in that echelon of all around knife. Uh, fantastic, the SBK Lamia version one there. Those are some of the few that if, I'm, if I can only spend a thousand on a knife and I can't spend less, this would be, you know, top three on the list, most likely, if not number one. Depends on the day, uh, as I am a collector after all. So um, all for now. See you on the next one and take care.